to share a little bit about the studio that I worked in, which was in Vancouver, British Columbia, Canada. It was called Artwork Studio. It was a 2,000 square foot painting and weaving studio. Uh, it was funded by Veterans Affairs Canada, and this program was running um, way back since the end of World War II. And it was the largest of its kind in Canada before the funding ended several years ago. And because our artists had the great opportunity to create all day, six days a week, if they so chose to do so, we got a really good idea about what artists with dementia could do. Because about 90% of our artists had some degree of dementia. Here we have the lovely Gertie uh, wearing one of our uh, famous uh, art studio hats made by facilitator Roberta. Uh, we often did this at birthday times of the year. And so our art studio program was really a social community meeting place within a hospital care home setting. Here we have a picture of the studio and um, since most art programs are run um, usually by private contractors, therapists and facilitators who would normally go into do an art class once a week for a few hours, our studio really provided a rare and unique study of what is possible for artists with dementia. Here is our year-end art show in Artwork Studio showcasing weaving, uh, original process art, and also a lot of product-based art. In this uh, sharing today, I'm going to illustrate many different motivations for artists to create art. And I'm also going to share some creative approaches that appeal to people with dementia. In Artwork Studio, we worked with each individual artist uh, with the aim to provide projects that were suitable for each person's talent, interests, and abilities, and motivations to create art. And this is Ted, who had advanced dementia. He painted every day, all day right up until two days before he died and his motivation to make art was to make money and to show up at a job which motivated many of the men who frequented the art studio. He was a hard working truck driver all of his life and he painted wrapping paper and gift bags for the art studio store and he showed up to work every day first thing in the morning. But interesting, uh, Ted would often go into deep right-brained artistic reveries. So on his left brain days, he would get really worried about practical matters and whether he had enough money and he would paint in practical colors. And then on his right-brained artistic days, his paintings would change into uh, freeform shapes and colors and he would rhapsodize about the beauty of life. These are some hanging screens that my colleague Marianne and I made of Ted's paper artwork. This is a good example of how simple artwork can be very satisfying for uh, some elderly artists who without the simple drawn lines of familiar subject matter really wouldn't be able to participate in an art program. So given his personality, Ted would not have been a candidate for creating without pre-drawn lines. Uh, Ted could not understand how to paint on a blank sheet of paper and he refused to paint subject matter that he did not understand. So uh, as he neared the end of his painting career, the flower shapes had to become very simple. Priscilla had taught herself to oil paint very proficiently at age 60 by watching Bob Ross on television. And when she arrived at the art studio, she refused to paint because she thought with her moderate dementia that she had lost her talent. And so we started her on uh, the pre-drawn line projects and once she gained confidence with painting again, she expressed that she wanted to paint original artwork again. Priscilla always worked off color references in fine art books and 
she made her paintings uniquely her own. Her paintings were often different than the original visual references uh, in the books, and she drew everything herself with her paintbrush. We uh, did not do any pre-drawing for her. Priscilla discovered a great passion for the master painter Monet and reproduced many of his great works in her own original style. As Priscilla's dementia increased, her execution became less realistic but no less beautiful. Still working off of a visual reference, this is her brain study of a vase of flowers. And this is one of her final paintings, and uh, by this time there is no obvious um, subject matter. This is a vase of flowers as well. Here is an artist that for a time was almost uh, entirely inwardly directed with his art making. Bernie was an artist with dementia, and he was mostly motivated by the creative process. Uh, he didn't really seem to care too much about the end result of his work. There was a period that I observed with Bernie where he was able to paint totally spontaneously for long periods of time. Uh, this was interesting to me because mostly I found that people with dementia would only paint for a short while on a, on a blank canvas or a blank piece of paper. Um, oftentimes they couldn't stay with it if there was no structure or no subject matter. Here is some more of his spontaneous work, which I find so fascinating. The cross-hatching was something very common that I saw over the years with artists with dementia. Here we have Ken. He was an artist with dementia who had never painted before joining the art program. Uh, but he was an art lover and a collector all of his life. So I often found that art lovers really had a good sense about how to paint. His wife told me that when he went to AA meetings in his younger days on the Lower East Side of Vancouver, he liked to, quote, help out his artist friends by buying their paintings and by the end of his life he had gathered quite a lucrative collection of well-known Canadian First Nations art. Ken liked to work with uh, references from art history books and he loved painting landscapes. He studied the famous landscape group, the Group of Seven uh, from Canada uh, very extensively and he reinterpreted their work in a softer way. So Ken sketched in pencil as he studied the original work in the art history book for about a week. And so he worked all day on composition and then when he was ready to paint he would quickly execute the painting in color in about a day and he became quite a masterful painter in his very short two-year painting career and when i took a group of artists to our local art gallery ken told the curator that his paintings should be on the wall and so she organized a show a year in advance which is a long time for uh, many of our artists to wait uh, and Ken wanted to see his work on the gallery wall but passed away a few weeks before his first gallery showing and here you can see his lovely uh, portraits on the wall in the gallery. This artist was a former electrician and he told us that he was dreaming on color every night and he couldn't wait to get back to his painting each day. And as his health waned, he continued to paint in bed and that was great to be able to facilitate that for him. And so we defined that when cognition was fairly unimpaired, um, Many of our artists really enjoyed having a beautiful and successful end product. So in order to engage a wider variety of artists in the studio, we did offer many pre-drawn options. Uh, and you can see they obviously were taken to a high degree of artistry. That said, I would like to present an opposite story about art from the imagination. Artist Claude, as you see here, would have absolutely nothing to do with any art project that was uh, 
pre-drawn that had any lines or designs on it. In his opinion, using visual references did not constitute real art. And so Claude developed his own intuitive drawing style. And he always said with amazement as he drew, I never know what's going to come next. I'd like to share a little bit about my mobile art classes when I worked in healthcare. This is an art cart that was used for uh, unit-based programs and one-to-one -one room visits. All paints were covered either with a tray or with lids on the art carts. And so this way of delivering this art, is, this is how that looks. Thanks so much for spending time with me celebrating the amazing art that people with dementia can create when given the time, attention, materials, and sensitive art facilitation. I have written a guidebook on how to facilitate art for older adults that has over 50 different art project ideas. You can find that book on my website at expressiveartworkshops.com. I am Shelley Clammer, and I welcome you to visit me there. expressiveartworkshops.com